Okay, we're live again. Hey, everybody. Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com, with you again from with Billy from Anxiety United in the UK. Good morning, Billy. Good afternoon. Hello there. Uh, we're doing the next in our series. We missed last week, so for those of you who asked where we were, we weren't here. Sorry. So <laughs> we're at next life in the series. Got in the way. Yes, life got in the way. We're, we're doing a, a series of videos together, podcast videos about an article that I wrote many years ago. It's kind of an anxiety 101 thing. And we'll both link the article in our video description, or if you're on my website, you'll see it. And today we're going to tackle the subject of t coping skills and coping techniques and how to use those when you're in the midst of really high anxiety or even panic. So it's, and, and we say this every week, you know, this is a big one. It's a big topic. They're all big topics. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> yeah. But this, this is a big one. And most, this is the one that I think most people start to ask about. Okay. So what can I do? And this yeah. is where we actually start to talk about what can we do. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some coping techniques. Why don't you kick it off? What do you got going on? Okay, so I, just a point. I was, I've made a few notes, and the top note that I've made is that prevention is better than a cure Ooh. or a treatment. So if you can put these techniques that we are going to discuss into practice, not when you're feeling crap, but start now, start today. And hopefully, you know, that was my main takeaway from doing any research. Oh, that's really, really solid. Prevention. Yeah. So the, the top thing for me was taking useful time out every day or as often as you possibly can. And that's not taking time out and cracking open a cold one with the boys <laughs> or sitting playing video games, but taking useful time out, stuff like yoga, meditation, massage, breathing techniques, mindfulness. There's so many different things that we can talk about and go into but those are the main things that i was thinking considering coming to taking time out yeah that's a really good point i, I really like the idea that a prevention is better than a cure so mm -hmm. maybe before we get into the as actually talking about some coping techniques maybe we should mm -hmm. we, we should definitely so as you're listening to us keep that in mind that these skills that we're going to talk about or these things that you can do are things that you have to practice all the time not just when you're in a panic attack, because these are skills that you'll learn just like speaking a foreign language or learning to ice skate. You have to practice them. And the second thing, and, and Billy and I were talking about this before we went live, it's really super important to remember that you have to keep an open mind when we talk about these coping techniques, because none of them will stop a panic attack dead in its tracks. It, this is not, we're not, it's not meant to do that. So mm -hmm. if you have that adrenaline dump and you are in a panic, as we have all have been and we know how that feels, you know, Mindfulness and breathing and things of that nature are designed to limit the intensity and the duration of your panic. They're not meant to just stop it dead. None of what we're going to talk about today is just going to stop your panic attack dead. It just there's nothing that does that short of like a Star Trek shot in the neck that puts you out. You know, like I'm not aware of that. Yeah. yeah. So those two things: practice all the time, even when you're feeling good, and just be realistic about what these these tools are designed to do. Right. So if you can learn to, to do some of these things, you can limit the duration of your panic attack, but it's never meant to just stop it dead in its tracks. Super That's important the, to keep that in mind. The key thing that I took from the article, I think it's written in the article, is that once the adrenaline's in the system. It is. That's you're going it. through it regardless. Right. So you whatever you're doing. Exactly right. Once you have that dead dump, the epinephrine adrenaline is in your bloodstream. It just is. Now it's just chemical. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to run its course, and you're going to feel the way you're going to feel physically. That's mm -hmm. just the way it is. But, you know, it seems to be conventional wisdom is if you don't add more fear and you don't add to the cycle, you know, you're talking about anywhere from some people as little as five minutes up to maybe 12 to 15 minutes, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it begins to dissipate. The human body is not designed to just continually be at that high state. So what we're going to talk about today is ways to short circuit that fear cycle and just let the adrenaline dump run its course and then you'll begin to feel better quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And these, these things are general life techniques as well. They're not just things for coping during panic, are they? They're, they're things that we should, really, yes, time permitting, do as, as often as possible anyway. That's very true. And when you hear people talk about things like stress, uh, stress management or anger management or just general mental health, well-being, spiritual well-being, these are good things to just know how mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I will tell you that learning, and I, my big one is kind of that, quieting the mind thing i'll talk about that as we go but yeah. that has been a skill that i learned to help me get through panic attacks but that serves me every single day every day mm -hmm. and we'll talk about why so let's talk about some like what are your favorite coping techniques what are the things that you do uh, 
useful. Let me have a look what I put on my list. Do you know what? I'm pretty useless when it comes to. I'm dead set on safety behavior stuff, which ah. is that's it's like the, the negative. Next, yep, yeah, that's yeah, the next yeah, episode, yeah. So, but yes, that's the thing that I always seem to go to. I mean, in the past, I've I've done I've got some hypnotherapy audios, so I'll just go upstairs, maybe lay on the bed, headphones in, and just take twenty minutes out. Okay. And the the I do hundred percent feel the benefits after it. It's just that I don't always go and do that. I don't know why. I find these things that work and these things that help, like we'll eat healthily for a few weeks and I'll get on the treadmill as often as I can. And these things I feel benefits. But when I feel a bit better, I tend to just scrap them and think, right, I'm okay now. We can knock that on the head and let's carry on. But you notice that you start to dwindle again after not doing those things. That's very true. And that's where your initial point about practicing even when you feel good is so important because mm -hmm. these are habits. We have to actually build a habit. Um, so let, let's talk about, uh, like you said, okay, so you might use some hypno, you know, uh, hypnosis yeah, yeah. type recordings or guided meditations. A lot of people like mm -hmm. those. We'll call them guided meditations. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a safety behavior. I mean, it, it, you know. No, no. I was, th I was thinking that that's what I would usually do, like bottles oh, okay. of water. Splashing more. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Things that save me. So coping techniques. I think we can probably outline them. And then there's a couple of major ones. There's there's breathing techniques. Yeah. There there's progressive. There's muscle re body relaxation techniques. Yeah, yeah. And to me, the most important one is that are the techniques that are designed to quiet your thoughts, like calm mm -hmm. your mind down. So when you're when you're dealing with coping techniques in the the context of high anxiety or panic, you're really looking at trying to you know, take the edge off physically, if you can, yep. um, and stop the, the runaway train of catastrophic thoughts and what ifs and oh my gods and that fear cycle in your head, you have to quiet yeah, your yeah. mind. So let's talk about breathing. Breathing is a big one, right? Yeah, I think there's a few breathing exercises on our YouTube channel. So <laughs> there's a million of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. They're everywhere. And they are useful. I think if you very, you've just got to give yourself time. I think that one of the main things for me when I first ever did them was just because you, or for me anyway, thinking about my breathing, that's one of the things that sets off anxiety for me sometimes. So I'll think I'm not getting enough breath or whatever. Yes. So when, when you're sitting and you're telling yourself, right, I'm going to sit and do a breathing exercise, which means I'm going to be bringing my attention to my breath, which is what freaks me out. Sometimes that can be a bit of a, maybe that puts people off doing it. And certainly for the first few minutes, you may feel a bit uncomfortable because you're carbon dioxide levels and your oxygen levels are going to be completely different probably to what you're used to yes so just give yourself a chance but they definitely do help relax your whole body you feel your muscles just start to ease when you give those breathing exercises a chance and when you do it correctly and, and these are things that have been just time tested and we, we yeah, yeah, measured in things like galvanic response and EMG studies and things like that. Yeah, there is mm. an actual relaxation response that the human body has, mm. and mm. you can help trigger it by proper breathing. And in a nutshell, it has to do with breathing into your belly and not your chest. That's right. The, so the two most right, two most important things are diaphragmatic breathing, where you're breathing. Mm. You know, your chest shouldn't be rising, your shoulders shouldn't be rising, your belly should be going out, and, yeah. and the inhale, and that the exhale should be longer than the inhale. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Wait, do I have that right? I haven't done it in a while. Exhale out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exhale is longer than the inhale. So say yeah. in, inhale for five, exhale for seven. Inhale for three, yeah. exhale for five. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the reason why the exhale is longer than the inhale is to keep – I just want to make sure I have that right. We do have that right, correct? It is right. Okay, yeah. Uh, 100%. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, and that, that's to help because what winds up happening in breathing techniques is a lot of people wind up doing the <sighs> – <sighs> yeah, the heavy side, yeah, and, yeah. and that will lead to your nose tingling and your lips tingling and your hands tingling and <laughs> hyperventilation and and that sort of thing. So if you do your breathing incorrectly, you can actually make things a little worse by putting yourself in in, in a hyperventilated kind of state. So, yeah, I think a lot of the symptoms are related to breathing, aren't they? Very like much. The, dizzy, the dizziness and the, yes, very much. Yeah. I think mm. a lot of people will find. I know for me, I would always find like, wait a minute, why am I holding my breath? I didn't even realize yeah. I was holding my breath. Mm. Um, so th learning those breathing techniques and just practicing them um, as many times a day as possible so that it just becomes a habit to breathe that way mm -hmm. is important. So I'm sure, we can, I'm sure we can link a few good videos where people show how to do it. We don't have to talk about it that much. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's yeah. definitely there's hundreds of them. Yeah. And then uh, the next one I think I'd probably talk about is the other way to relax your body would be like progressive muscle relaxation. Is, yeah. And we can link a million of those videos as well. 
Got one. Um, yeah, you got one. Yeah. Okay. So prog- <laughs> progressive muscle relaxation is essentially you're, you're scanning Pushing your my own content. Yeah. Very good. Push your own content. It's good content. <laughs> Billy's content is solid. Um, so progressive muscle relaxation is essentially all about scanning your body, which is a bad thing for people like us, but you're scanning your body for those tension points where you're holding that tension physically and then letting it go. There so, was one, one in particular that I had. I can't remember where I got the the audio from but it started off with the breathing so you'd spend like five minutes doing the breathing just to regulate Mm -hmm. then you moved on to the body scan which was nice and then you do a visualization so like that had the three things intertwined and that was spot on that's what i used to use a lot and i'd always find that that progressive muscle relaxation after it you do actually feel you can feel the tension just going out of you once you've worked through the exercises highly recommended yeah yeah, and learning how to do that is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the third key for me, and I'm sure that other people, by all means, throw them in the comments and whatnot if you have other other coping techniques, but that the the quieting your mind, to me, is the single biggest thing. And I think it's the one that... Yes, it's the one that everybody ignores because we can learn to mm. breathe. We can learn to tense and relax, and it's easy to learn those things. Mm-hmm. It's difficult to learn to quiet your mind on demand. And... And really what we're learning here are meditation skills. And it has to do with mindfulness and living in the moment and all those things. But in a nutshell, what I can tell you is the skill that you're looking for is learning to to think about nothing, which I know sounds Mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you think about nothing? But in the end, you are learning the skill of, of literally emptying your head of thoughts. But that doesn't mean locking the door and keeping the thoughts out. Thoughts can come in and then you just let them go. You don't engage with them. You don't dialogue with them. And the object of the game is to just quiet your mind to zero if you can. And Mm -hmm. this is one that really takes practice. And you have to do it several times a day, just a few minutes at a time. You don't have to get in the lotus position with incense for an hour and go into an altered state. People, I think, misinterpret that whole meditation thing. Mm -hmm. But learning that skill and practicing it five, six, seven times every single day, even when you feel great, just learning to do that, you're building the habit, right? It's, It's building a habit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then what I find is if you combine that with breathing, with muscle relaxation, you start to get into the habit of when you feel that stress or there's something pressing on you, be it anxiety, mm-hmm. panic is coming, those things automatically kick in. And just like we know how to recite the alphabet because we've done it 10 zillion times, you just know how to do these things and you do them. And even if you get to full blown panic, it might only last 7, 8, 10, 12 minutes mm-hmm. as opposed to I was in a panic for, you know, hours. It, it, it these make they coping techniques really do make a difference and i, I think thinking sorry go on. no no i was going to say and i think to me the the mental you know dealing with your thoughts is the single most important one that gets ignored more than any other because it's the hardest I would skill say, to learn. yeah yeah it's the For hardest me, skill. Uh, yeah i would agree do you have a certain because what you've obviously done this many yeah. a times do you have a certain thoughts because they a lot of red light people say like pushing it away on clouds and stuff like that. Does that stuff work or do you just acknowledge the thought and then how do, how do you push the thought away? That's a good question. For me, let me think about this. Like the best visualization I wound up for me is that a thought goes in one side and then out the other. Right. Okay. Like, like I literally try and visualize the thought like leaving out of like my right ear. It's always a left to <laughs> right. I don't know why. <laughs> but, you know, okay, so a thought comes in. All right, fine. I'm just going to let it float out this side and go away. Yeah. So the key there is to understand that it's okay to have a thought. And that thought could be, oh, my God, I'm having a heart attack, like in the middle of a panic mm-hmm. attack. Or it could be like, oh, I, you know, we need whatever. I need milk. So it could, it could be anything. And when yeah. you're practicing, when you feel good, you know, that the thoughts may be about work or your kids or, or what happened in, you know, a football match the, the previous day. Whatever. It could be anything. But you let the thought come in and you let it go. And you get to the point where you're at that base state of no thought. Just no mm-hmm. thought. Mm-hmm. And it's it's difficult to learn. You really have to practice it a lot. That's it, especially in the heat of the moment, I guess. That's... Yes. Because if you'd never practice it, when you don't, if you don't do it, any of these things, if you don't do it when yeah. you feel good, yeah. you can't do it when you feel bad. Yeah, exactly. It's you the last thing that comes into your head. That's exactly mm-hmm. right. And, and you may mm-hmm. think, I know, and what I find is that people, they don't practice or they don't, they don't hone these skills. And then panic starts to hit. And then, they, okay, now I have to breathe. And they try and do it. And yeah. they try and meditate. And they wonder why it's and not. It, it's not working. And then, oh, these things don't work. And then they get discouraged. Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. nonsense. Like, it doesn't work for me. 
but, mm. but you have to learn to build the habit even when you feel good every day so that on demand, you just naturally react by slowing down your breathing, relaxing your body, going limp and quieting your mind. And I will tell you, and I know I'm rambling here a little bit, so bear with me for a second. That's okay. I feel like this is your... Well, I, I will t tell you that that skill the, of combining those things not only had got me out of you know, being afraid of panic. So I can be, ha honestly, I could be having a panic attack right now. You would mm -hmm. really not know. And, um, I'm not, but, but you really would know. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, they have carried through to other aspects of my life. So when I get into situations, I mean, I, I own my own business and mm -hmm. when the place is on fire, as happens sometimes the the comment I get most often is like, you're always just like this, man. How do you do that? Like you just, you just quiet, you know, just calmly see what's wrong and then we fix it. And you don't ever mm -hmm. panic. You don't freak out. You're calm under pressure. And I used to be like a crazy type A, like yelling and screaming kind of guy. And I still have a temper sometimes. But that skill that I learned in terms of helping me get out of anxiety and panic has served me very, very well in the whole yeah, rest yeah. of my life. Mm -hmm. Just, it just, things, you get a lot of clarity under pressure when you can do that. So I highly recommend learning how to do these things. Well, that's it. That's the habit. You've, you've formed the new habit and it's carried over yes. of, as, as it will to every, every aspect. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the, the key things just to recap a little bit, and I'm not sure how long we've been going for because we seem to ramble sometimes, but you know, Billy made the good point of doing these things when you feel good, like not just when you feel bad, super, that's super it. important. And also understanding that none of what we're talking about here, be it, Relax, muscle relaxation, breathing, or meditation skills are going to stop your panic dead in its tracks. It's just mm, not. Mm, it's just not. Mm. And I think what we're looking for is what we talk about, like Claire Weeks, we talk about those books all the time, and, and like the other series I was doing with Holly. Yeah. That the ability to relax and do the opposite, relax into your anxiety, relax into mm -hmm. your panic, is this. This is yeah. how you do it. This is what you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. People ask all the time, well, how, what do you mean relax into the panic? I mean do these things. These exact well, that's things. it. That's the it's the exact opposite to what you think you should be doing at that moment. Yes. Or what you you feel that you're being compelled to do. Yes. Do the do the opposite. In a way, yeah. In a way, and I mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. and I know it's going to kind of naturally. The, the next episode we're going to do is about you know the difference between coping and avoidance or safety behaviors. But maybe we should mention a little something about that. That's going to be my forte. Yes. I'm, I'm the avoidance king. The king of. <laughs> Well, I'll just, I'll just say this past weekend, I was just telling Drew before we came on, my dad was rushed into hospital on Saturday. People that have anxiety are probably freaking out now. Hospitals talk. Sure. But like, I had to go over, see my dad at his house, the ambulance turned up, and then I was absolutely fine at this point. For some strange reason, my thoughts were directed at him and not whether I was getting enough air and all that kind of crazy crap. But then as soon as he went to the hospital, that became like my anxiety took over and I knew that I had to drive I don't know about 40 minutes in a direction to a place that I've never been before and that was sort of the peak of my anxiety was getting there so I he's been in hospital since Saturday and I've avoided going in to visit him so I've been going to the car park and sitting there so I'm kind of pushing my boundaries but I'm still avoiding going in the hospital so I'm sitting in the freaking car park it's pretty pointless but I am taking people to visit him, so right. I'm doing something, but I'm just not doing enough, and that's the avoidance. But then to mention like safety behaviors, the first day that we went, I had my Claire Weeks book with me, bottles of water, packets of mints, bags of crisps. Oh, yeah. Just... Oh, the same toolkit from way back when that we, we all <laughs> yeah. shared, right? The mints, yeah. That's yeah. it, that's it. Yeah, and it's always, and like, now that we, we've been going pretty much every day, I think we've been every day for the last hour, I don't know, since Saturday. Yeah. And, like, every day, I'm just leaving something behind. So, that, like, we're going later this evening, so I know it'll probably just be a bottle of water and a packet of mints. Sure. We can leave the Claire Weeks book at home now, we sort of, <laughs> you know. And I've been getting, when we've been, I've been sitting in the car park, I've been getting out of the car and just walking further from the car every time we've gone. Makes so it's sense. just, it's like that gradual thing. It's just that 
he's due to come out tomorrow. So by right. the time I actually get to the reception desk, he'll be leaving. He's, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, we want your dad to get out of the hospital as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. But but if he was there, unfortunately, for a very long time, sooner or later, probably it. in about Eventually. a week or so, you'd be going yeah, yeah. to visit him. I bet. Yeah, I think I'd be in there. Yeah, but it's just that, like the avoidance. Yeah, I mean, in, I'm interested in in discussing what I avoid, but also maybe other people's comments and things that they avoid, the other safety behaviors as well, because yeah. that's it's always very interesting. And I think to bring it back to today's topic, I, there's a there's a blur, it, and it's hard to understand sometimes between yeah, what yeah. a coping technique is and what avoidance and safety behaviors are. Mm-hmm. Coping is good, and avoidance and safety is bad. It's a very oversimplification, but and we'll talk yeah, about that it, next time, yeah. I think. Yeah, we could probably talk a lot about that. Stuff. That's why I struggled with today's episode being coping techniques, because... I don't cope that well. To oh. be honest. No, but you know, I don't really think about. I just seem to get through it. Yeah. I don't have specific things unless it's real bad, and that's when I'll go and listen to relaxation audio stuff like that. Sure. That's when I tend to turn to it when I'm at the height. So I'm not. I don't take my own advice in in saying that the prevention. Just do this anyway. Yeah. You know, same yeah. with exercise, same with diet and caffeine and sleeping. Actually, all of those are, are good, too. We didn't really talk about that. But even mm. even things that you can do outside of the realm of being anxious or panicky and yeah. eating well and trying to – and I know it's hard when you're dealing with anxiety. Sometimes sleep is impacted. But sleeping yeah. the best you can and eating well and regular exercise and, and even having friends or family, being social, mm. sharing your burdens sometimes with a therapist or you know somebody close to you that you can trust. Mm. These mm-hmm. are all just good mental health skills that everybody should have anyway. And they also help. I, I feel that those are also coping behaviors. They're just sort of background coping behaviors, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because if you can bring your mental Healthy and habits. emotional state to a more manageable level overall, mm. it, it mm. tends to tends to help the anxiety thing a little bit. And I, there's one other thing I think it's worth mentioning, um, because you said, well, you're not very good at coping, but which I think is wrong. I think you're you're a little harsh on yourself. You wouldn't be where you are if it wasn't that. Yeah, but um, I, I think. So we talk about these things and these skills that you can learn to do and practice when, you don't, when, when you're feeling good. So you can put them into, into action when you need to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and building habits and all these kind of things. Like what we're talking about here is making a plan, like a coping plan. There's extra strategy here. I'm going to learn to meditate. I'm going to learn to breathe properly. I'm going to learn yeah. aggressive muscle relaxation. I'm going to change my diet. But the trick is you have to make a plan and have a strategy and then actually execute that. So – This is nowhere in that my old article here, but I think it really highlights the fact that if you're going to overcome these problems, it's an active process. There's no. We were talking about a video I watched not too long ago where somebody said Mm -hmm. that the answer to anxiety was rest, and and it's 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 flat out not. This is an active process, so you have to actively make a plan to learn these skills and then actively practice them, learn them, and practice them. So not for one day, not for one day. It's a plan. Not when it's, yeah, that's it. Like you get the fire and then you maybe right. you watch a few YouTube videos and you think, right, today's the day. Yeah. But to, today ain't the day. Today can be the start. Right. You know, no, no one day is the day. No one exactly. day is the day. And when it exactly. comes to coping techniques is maybe the thing that highlights that the most is that this is not like you get all, you know, you watch somebody, do, you know, do a big challenge. You get all pumped up and then you, you go to the mm-hmm. supermarket that you haven't been to in six months and that's great but that's not really a plan like it's it's not yeah, a long-term strategy and it's not a yeah. day you build these skills over long periods of time so this could be weeks or months or a year where you you execute this plan that you have to make so that's coping techniques do we miss anything we could probably talk for another hour but i could probably talk for another hour about this <laughs> yeah, yeah i appear to have a lot to say about this i'm sorry i kind of monopolized the conversation no that's good that's good yeah so, uh, all right, so next time we're going to do avoidance techniques, difference between coping yeah. and avoidance and safety behaviors and that sort of stuff. So we'll do that I'll one have a, probably I'll next have a long week. List. Yes. And, of course, I will end by reminding everybody, you know, where you can find us, Billy, on YouTube, right, youtube.com slash anxiety united. Yep. Um, youtube.com slash that anxiety guy, I believe I have now. I don't even yes. know. Or that anxiety guy.com, Twitter, that anxiety guy, Facebook, that anxiety, whatever. And we're getting links are, below. Links are everywhere. They're, if you're on the podcast page or the YouTube channel and subscribe to both of us and like the videos, we never ask yeah. people to do that. Like I'm a terrible YouTuber. You're supposed yeah, to same. You know, like and subscribe. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's the deal with that. All right, folks. Awesome. Let's hear what you have to say. Comments. Thanks for watching. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see you next time.